in sea fishing terms, you could call a venue uh, like your basic area that you're fishing. Whereas when you hear anglers talk about marks, they're being a little bit more specific. So you're unlikely to hear a sea angler, for example, give away the location of a specific mark, as these could be individual rocks or boulders, and these would tend to hold habitual fish. However, thanks to the UK's variety of bedrock, you've got tidal flow and coastal industry, it offers a huge variety of angling venues. You've got man-made structures like harbour walls and breakwaters. And these are often a good fishing platform allowing access to deep water, negates the need for long casting and there's a nice flat casting stage on, on some of these and they're good for beginners. Another good place to start and you've got, often got easy access to fish of course rivers and estuaries. You see a lot of uh, junior anglers start here and they do produce some amazing catches of fish as well so check out estuaries and rivers. You've got mixed ground. These areas will have a mixture of sand all the way up to boulders in the intertidal zone. So it's a good place to try perhaps for your first bass. You've got rocky reefs fishing over boulders. Now these boulders preferably would have a lot of weed on them. The reason for this is that the fish are hunting for the quarry things like crabs and prawns and they can be found hiding here. However there can be areas of uneroded hard rock. These are the ones that jut right out to sea and this can provide a change in the current and the depth. And again, it gives a natural feature that can attract the fish and aid your fishing. Piers are an ideal fishing platform, a great place for the beginner to start. A lot of people start their sea angling on a pier. And you can learn from other anglers, of course. You can have a safe fishing platform. It's usually nice and um, secure. The pier structure is also attractive for fish as well. Um, and it provides that access to deeper water, again, without the need for a large cast. Even large, flat, open beaches can fish well. Uh, they've got a large tidal zone. Surf beaches, things like the southwesterly facing storm beaches as well can be a magnificent place to catch fish. Uh, Inch Strand in Ireland, for example. And these venues are very interesting after a storm. They throw up all sorts of catches. And you've got your deep water rock marks. These are typical of the West Country, North Wales, places like the Llyn Peninsula and also huge parts of Scotland. And the bedrock itself doesn't dissolve in the water so you don't get that cloudy sort of look to the sea that you'd get on the south coast where there's chalk, for example. So where do you start? Well, the obvious choice is perhaps start close to where you live. Uh, have a look at some of the roads leading out to the coast. If you're close to the sea, then this opens up a lot of possibilities. You've got the added advantage of being able to pick and choose the weather conditions, tidal states, and if word gets out, for example, that the mackerel are in or there's some good bass being caught, you can get down as soon as possible. But if you perhaps lived in the east of the country, you'll find miles and miles of open beaches. This is the Suffolk and Norfolk coastline, for example. Uh, it's certainly a good place to get really good at casting. You've got the southwest. This will provide ample of opportunity for a wide range of angling techniques. Scotland has some huge inland locks. Um, I'll provide a few links to some videos for fishing in Scotland after this as well, um, if you're up that way. You might also consider your access to these areas. Um, so start to look at the names of the venues close to you. So while you're sitting at home and you want to find somewhere to fish, you haven't been fishing before, check out the magazines. Uh, sea Angler uh, is the main, has the main readership, I think, still. and. Uh, that often has mark reports usually written by a local. There's online forums, uh, they'll have your latest catch report and the biggest online forum WSF which is the World Sea Fishing is a good one on here. You'll get more up-to-date news there than the magazines provide and individuals will sort of keep you posted on on how well a marks fishing. If you're just starting out there's a number of great peers in the UK uh, you can definitely find a few locals to get tips from as they'll often fish the venue regularly and respect their space but I find most anglers are, are happy to reach out and give you a hand on piers as well so that's got the other, other advantage. But whatever your choice of venue get down there at low tide uh, see what's happening over low tide each venue will have a better time of tide or weather to fish in and it is simply a case of putting in the hours really to get to know it well. Have a look at this mixed ground mark up here this is uh, a very low tide, a spring low tide. You can also consult charts and OS maps too. Uh, you've got the Explorer range at 125,000. These are great fun. You could be fishing a venue that hasn't even seen a rod in line for years. So don't be too afraid uh, when you get a bit more confident to go off the beaten track. 
explore somewhere new and going with a hunch that could make that catching the fish at a new venue even more rewarding. Uh, it does sound a bit of a cliche but do try and think like a fish. In our video on bass marks there are some commonalities and in time you'll see those. Our podcast with bass expert as well, Shane Joy, he talks about how to fish a fishing mark for the first time. I'll, I'll put a link for that at the end of the video as well. Deeper rock marks are different altogether. Um, so you obviously got a large depth of water here. And sometimes these venues will involve a bit of a walk. And you've got to be a bit careful with steep cliffs surrounding it. But the fishing can be worth it. Uh, larger fish like pollock, conger, rays, bull huss. Uh, they can all be caught by just dropping the bait into a lightly looking and hole. And then of course you've got the option of using a lure as well in this lovely clear water as well. It can make that lure fishing really fun. Uh, please subscribe if you found this information useful. Uh, it would be great to have your comments. And if you listen to our podcast with Shane, then please let us know uh, with a review on iTunes. Otherwise, I hope you'd subscribe. We've got a couple more of these beginners videos to come. And thank you very much for watching.